En question. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir, Monsieur le Président. The court is now in session. L'audience est ouverte. This morning, the chamber will continue to hear the testimony of the witness Richard Dutman via tele uh, video conference from the United States of America. And Ms. Jesse Huang, could you report the attendance of the parties and individuals through today's proceedings? The Grafchi. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to Monsieur this case are present. Les au procès As for Nunjir, he is present in the holding cell downstairs. As he requests to waive his right to be present in the courtroom, his waiver has been delivered to the greffier. The witness who is to continue his testimony today, that is Mr. Richard Dutman, by a video conference from the United States of America, the ABA unit informs the greffier that the link has been connected and the witness is ready to testify. Thank you, Mr. President. President, thank you, Mr. Chia Si Huang. The chamber now decides on the request by Nun Chia. The chamber has received a waiver from Nun Chia dated 31st March 2015. He confirms that due to his health problem, that is, headache, back pain, and that he cannot sit for long, and in order to effectively participate in the future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 31st March 2015 hearing. He has been informed by his counsel about the consequence of this waiver, that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his right to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report by the duty doubter for the accused at the ECCC, dated 31st March 2015, who notes that the health condition of Nun Chi is that he still has his uh, chronic back pain and he cannot sit for long, and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC, Internal Rules, the Chamber grants Nun Jiers his request to follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs by an audio-visual means for today's proceedings as he waives his direct presence in the courtroom. The AV unit is instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nun Chi can participate in and follow today's proceedings remotely. Mr. President, good morning, Mr. Richard Dutman. Le Président poursuit. Monsieur Richard Dutman, bonjour. Good morning. Bonjour. President. Today, the chamber will continue to hear your testimony, and you will be questioned by the defense teams. Uh, Mr. Richard Dutman, are you ready? I am ready. Yes, I am ready. Thank you. And the Chamber would like now to give the floor to the defense teams and the council. You can proceed. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Good evening, uh, Mr. Dutman. Um, I am about. Good evening. Good evening. I'm about to finish my um, examination, and as indicated to you yesterday, I would like uh, to finish um, with uh, listening with you to an audio tape, um, an audio tape of um, an interview or speech. Uh, that Paul Pot has given to you and Elizabeth Becker in uh, December 1978. Now, Mr. Dutman, I believe you received yesterday um, through your counsel a transcript of the about nine and a half minutes of the interview. Uh, is that indeed correct? And if yes, um, have you been able to read it? I have read it and I listened to an audio version of, it, of most of it before this session began. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dutman. Um, Mr. President, um, for the benefit of um, Chia and also for the benefit of um, the public, I would like to ask your permission to have this <coughs> nine and a half minute audio tape um, played in the courtroom. I believe the AV unit is ready uh, if you grant the request to play the audio. Um, maybe one warning to accompany my request. Um, the quality is not always um, that good. It seems that when Pol Pot is speaking in Khmer, um, his words are quite, quite soft, and when Tiung uh, Prasit is translating, the words are loud. So I hope uh, it goes well. Um, um, so again, my, my request to have your permission. Your request is granted, and the AV uh, unit, please play the audio file as requested by Council Coupe. If we can stay in a, peace, in a situation of peace, the building up of our country and uh, could be more rapidly and also we could have more possibility to build up a people. situation in democratic country here, as you are aware of, and the raw opinion also is aware of, is that democratic country here is under the aggression of the Vietnamese. Okay. The whole world of opinion uh, paid great attention about on the Vietnamese aggression against democratic Kampuchea. Stop the nonsense. There are President, uh, please pause. And Councilor Coupe, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm, I'm also directing um, my remarks to the AV unit. It is the excerpt that starts at minute 33.15. I, I believe um, they were accordingly instructed, um, and I heard something completely different, so I'm not quite sure where they are. It is uh, document D28R, starting at minute 33.15. Ce que l'on entend est complètement différent. 
Now, Bokal Prancho to her jump as I get my baby unit. Please play this segment as indicated by Councillor Coupe. Diffuser the segment que vient de vous indiquer. At 33 minutes 15 seconds time mark. Thank you. As for the fact that Vietnam wanted to rely on the expansionist, the international expansionist Soviet or the Warsaw Pact, it's not a determinant factor. The determinant factor is the people in Vietnam, in the country. The international list expansion is Soviet and the Warsaw Pact are very far from Cambodia. Nom top mobi nung dam bay bay Cambodia through the nation. If they wanted to send the army to aggress the camp here, they have to carry them for a long distance. For a long distance. And they have to transport everything from the country because they can rely on anything in Vietnam. Because Vietnam has not enough to feed itself. And the more Soviet advisors are in Vietnam, the more difficulty Vietnam faces. And if the Soviet Union sent the army of the Warsaw Pact in the Vietnam, it would have more difficulties for the Vietnamese people. The, on the other side, the Warsaw Pact has also to face the NATO. NATO. The team Yum under the Soviet Pact and Pan Vasovi, Mobile Capitiet, Mazier, has good coup. The international, if the international expansion is Soviet and the Warsaw Pact want to come and aggress Cambodia and the Southeast Asia country, they have to think about the European countries also, to take in consideration the European countries, Western. <laughs> Soviet 
วินสเตรัคิดคอยเวทีนิยมอันตรายสุดยิ่งสนุกยิ่งกลมกลมยิ่งบารมีดดอกกำลังนี่แต่ตัวจริงตัวเต็มมาไว้มือทางกัมพูชีมาเรียกนี้ตัวประชาชนทางตระกูลเรื่องที่เกิดขึ้นในอีสต์ยุโรปอีสต์นัทเทเบิลอีสต์เทเบิลบอลฟอร์ดอินเตอร์เนชั่นแนลอีสต์เอ็กซ์พอร์ชันอีสต์สเวียนเดสเวียนอาจจะก็ยังคงเกี่ยวกับสถานการณ์ถ้าเขาจะต้องการที่จะถอดพลังของพวกเราจากอีสต์ยุโรปจากทะเลตะวันตก South East Asia, we have also to be answered. Hmm. Why? 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 Have to be also worried about that. Yeah. 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 Can you see it today? ปฏิจจไลน์มาเรียกเรียกได้ปฏิจจไลน์มาเรียนสาวกได้เหมือนสกปรกไอยสวิตจากสมบัติบาสวีมายกกำปิดเงินเยอะเยอะมีบ้านต่างประเทศบิซายแคมพูชีอันดับสองอีสเอเชียคอนทรีดีเอเชียคอนทรีและอันดับคอนทรีทั่วโลกไม่ยอมรับว่าเซเวียตและวัตถุประสงค์ใช้ฐานะของประเทศแคมพูชีของสองอีสเอเชียในทางที่เขาต้องการวิเคราะห์ว่าย้อนเปลี่ยนกัมพูชีโดยรวมมันเป็นการที่ยึดสักเฉยๆที่ตีนยมอันตรายที่ตามไปหาหนวัตถุสักสักตอนเจนบริยุทธ์สักตอนดำเจียวนี้ที่ตัวประเทศพูดมาหนึ่งครั้งเราเห็นว่าเวียดนามในการควบคุมกัมพูชีในคอนเวนซ์กับประเทศโซเวียตเอ็กซ์พันชันิสในการที่จะทำให้เขาสามารถเข้าถึงอินโดจีนาเฟเดอร์เรชันและทำการควบคุมของประเทศโซเวียตเอเชียได้รับการเสียหายที่สูงที่สุดในปีนี้ทุกวิจัยมุ่งหมายที่จะกำปุ่งจุดบุญสังคริมยืนยันกำปุ่งเกี่ยวกับเด็กได้ขัดข้องหักหนวดในสักกลที่บุปผีกำสังคริมประมูลปัจจุบันวาสุรีมรวัยกำปุ่งเพราะฉะนั้นดิฉันเห็นว่าเวียดนามกำลังพุ่งไปสู่การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อสู้การต่อ So this problem is not an ordinary problem of our world. The can what get the sack or what you some rat sack can and can what we can get the sack but so this in a Asia we in Asia what we in a certain look what we. This is the carrying out of the Vietnamese strategy of Indochina Federation. And 
the strategy of the Soviet in Southeast Asia and in the world. Place called Tichiba. Now the world is clearly aware of. Nung tak kembon basuhi ko min tenang kecang ni. And among the world's most powerful member, there are also forces who oppose the British Indian Muslim Republic. And the various countries in the world have opposed also. Um, Mr. Dutman, have you been able to listen to this audio tape? Yes. Um, of, of course, I realize it's a long time ago um, that this interview took place. Um, but does this, does the listening to this interview um, jog your memory? No. Um, do you remember uh, any reaction at your side um, in relation to this interview that you had after the interview, or is that simply too long ago? I don't recall any reaction. Um, is there any reaction now at this stage that you can give uh, to the trial chamber about this interview or am I asking too much now? I don't get your question. Is, is there anything uh, that you would like to say now in reaction to uh, having heard again this interview? No, I have no comment. No, je n'ai aucun commentaire. Um, Mr. President, since I have run Monsieur out of time, um, Président, I would like to receive the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dudman. Have a good parole. evening. Je vous remercie beaucoup, Monsieur Dudman. Très bonne Thank you. Monsieur Dudman, merci. President. President. Thank you, and the Chamber would like now to give the floor to the co-prosecutors. Do you have the floor? Thank you, Mr. President. A good evening to you, Mr. Dudman. Um, my, name is, my name is Dale Lysak. I'm one of the international uh, prosecutors, uh, and I will be uh, asking you uh, some questions today. Uh, good evening. I, yesterday, um, Noon Chea's counsel uh, asked you uh, about your capture and detention in Vietnam or in Cambodia by Vietnam troops in 1970. And I have just a few uh, follow-ups on that subject. Uh, I want to read uh, or uh, reference you to a short excerpt from your book, 40 Days with the Enemy, uh, which is on our case file as E338.17, uh, at S0002318 through 89, uh, only available in English. Uh, and you wrote here that you were generally treated well with the exception of the first day, when you were treated roughly for a time by Cambodians, in your words, uh, which treatment was halted by uh, authorities of the Liberation Army, uh, who guaranteed your safety uh, if it was verified you were international journalists. Now, I want to follow up on this. When you said that you were treated roughly by Cambodians, uh, who were those people and what did they do to you? I don't recall. When you said that uh, you made a reference to the Liberation Army as having intervened 
and protected you. Do you remember uh, who you were referring to by the Liberation Army? Uh, who was it that came in and intervened and protected you? Uh, I don't remember. Let me move to another subject, uh, Mr. Dudman. Um, I want to ask you a, a few questions about uh, another issue that came up yesterday, uh, which is the obstacles uh, or limitations uh, you faced as a journalist trying to obtain information uh, when you were in uh, Democratic Camp Chia in December 1978. Uh, yesterday, uh, Mr. Kope Munche's counsel uh, read to you an excerpt from uh, one of your articles, E3-3290, in which you stated, quote, the visit, the visit amounted to a conducted tour with strict limits on conversations with ordinary Cambodians and no opportunity to speak with any but a few top government officials, end quote. You used that same term yesterday in your testimony when you told the Defense Council that your visit was a conducted tour which you described as pretty unsatisfactory. Can you explain to the court why you called your visit to Democratic Campuchia a conducted tour and why as a journal journalist uh, you felt unsatisfied? I like to ask questions as a journalist and get answers, and uh, that was really impossible at the time. I, I don't have a, a, a great uh, recollection now of those events of nearly 40 years ago, but in reading uh, from my book, uh, it, it rings a bell. And I can remember the feeling of frustration. <coughs> uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, refer now to a document E3 slash 1156. Um, this is a surviving report from Democratic Campuchia uh, about requests that yourself, um, though your name is translated in this document as Lidman instead of Dudman, um, but as a list of requests from yourself, Professor Caldwell and Elizabeth Becker, which was written by a cadre named Ni Khan. And the fifth request from you in this list was, and I quote, to meet with leaders such as the first prime minister, deputy prime minister Ing Suri, deputy prime minister Son Sen, Ing Turit, Q Ponnery, brother Nun Chea, and King Sihanouk. First, uh, and I realize it was a long time ago, do you have any recollection of meeting a person um, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs named Khan. I do not. Let me read to you uh, a little of what you wrote uh, in relation to your requests to interview uh, government officials. Uh, this is in an article titled Governing in Secret. It is in E3 slash 3290, which is a, uh, contains a series of articles by you at English ERN 00419211 and Khmer 01070714. You wrote here about how, despite 
making repeated requests, the only top government officials you were allowed to meet were Pol Pot and Ing Suri. And you also stated the following, quote, I had asked to meet most of the known officials, a total of about 10 including two French-educated sisters who are married to Pol Pot and Ing Siri and held important positions in their own right. I asked in vain to meet the former head of state, Prince Nordim Sionouk. Continuing below, officials said he had been refusing all requests by visiting delegations who wanted to see him. End of quote. My first question about this, uh, do you remember ever being given a reason uh, for why you could not meet with government officials, leaders such as Nguyen Chea, Son Sen, uh, and the wives of Ing Siri and Pol Pot, uh, Ing Tret and Q Ponnery. Were you ever given a reason as to why you could not meet with those people? I don't remember. I may have written that, that, uh, something about what reason was given me at the time, but I haven't seen that in reviewing my writings. Were you ever told while you were in Democratic Kampuchea and in Phnom Penh that Prince Sihanouk was in fact at the royal palace under house arrest? Uh, I don't recall being told that. Had you previously met uh, Sihanouk in China? I don't believe so. I'm going to turn now to an article you wrote titled uh, Conformity a must for survival in Cambodia. This is E338.19. And uh, in this article, uh, you talked about a visit to a cooperative called Lebo Cooperative in Takao province. Uh, while you were there, you were told that the cooperative included people from Phnom Penh, uh, and you, but you wrote that whenever there were requests to speak with some of them, they always turned out to be away in the rice fields bringing in the harvest. End of quote. You wrote that you were eventually allowed to talk to a man named Net Yan, uh, but you described the circumstances of that interview as follows. Quote, Yan's comments could hardly have been spontaneous. He was interviewed in an otherwise empty communal dining hall with a government official from Phnom Penh doing the interpreting and several other officials and cadres listening in, end of quote. A, a question, Mr. Dillon. Was there anyone in your group that is amongst yourself, Elizabeth Becker and Malcolm Caldwell, who was sufficiently fluent in Khmer to understand what people were saying to you, such as this person? Or were you dependent upon the Ministry of Foreign Affairs officials to interpret what was being said to you during these interviews? I don't remember that, uh, where I got that impression that I, I don't remember who, who it was that uh, uh, told me that. My question, um, did you have your own interpreters with you, or did you have to rely on the officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to translate when you conducted interviews? I don't recall having my own interpreter along with us.
And uh, I realize it was a long time ago. Question. Je suis bien conscient du fait que tout cela remonte à longtemps. When you were in Labo Cooperative in Takao province, and the district in which Labo is located, uh, Tramcock district, uh, do you remember whether there were local leaders there who met with you? Uh, I don't recall uh, such a meeting. In uh, your August 1990 article uh, that you were asked about yesterday, uh, E307 slash 5.2.16, um, despite the control over what you saw and heard during this trip, uh, you wrote the following, quote, in Phnom Penh, and on a 1,000-mile automobile tour, I saw shocking evidence of brutality and regimentation, end of quote. Can you uh, describe to the court uh, in general what it is that you saw during your trip that you considered to be shocking evidence of brutality and regimentation. I don't remember why I uh, said that or why I wrote that. I, I, I have no recollection of uh, what led me to say that. Let me turn now to another subject that um, you talked about a little yesterday, which was your um, attempt to acquire information relating to the food supplies and health of the people in Cambodia. You wrote an article uh, on the 28th of December 1978 titled, uh, Is Cambodia Starving? This is document E305 slash 12.58. And in this report, uh, you wrote that you saw no evidence of starvation and that rice production appeared to have increased. Uh, but you also provided the following qualification to your statement, and I quote your words. This conclusion must be tentative. The government refused access to any production or trade specialists for detailed questioning about claimed yields. It likewise ignored repeated requests to take to visiting American reporters to any of the hospitals or small clinics that it says are operating by the score throughout Cambodia, nor would it permit an interview with any public health authority." Uh, end of quote. Can you explain why it would have been important to you as a journalist to visit a hospital or to speak to a public health official in order to assess whether people were in fact receiving a sufficient and adequate diet in democratic Kampuchea? I was trying to establish truth. Réponse. J'essayais d'établir la vérité. What type of things would you look for? What type of questions might you have asked if you had been allowed to go to a hospital or to meet with a public health official? I have a hard time placing myself back in that situation. I don't know what I would have asked, but I would have thought of some appropriate questions to try to get at the truth of what kind of health care they had. Mr. Dudman, uh, 
One of the witnesses who Question. has recently testified in this trial uh, is a man named Riel Son, and he was the deputy chief of the Tramcock District Hospital in Takao province from 1976 to the end of the Khmer Rouge regime. Uh, Tramcock District uh, was the location of the Labo Cooperative, one of the sites you and Ms. Becker were taken to. And on the 17th of March this year in this court, uh, reference, Your Honors, at uh, 11.08 through 11.14 of that morning. This witness testified that in the latter part of the regime, so the time period you were there, the number of people dying from malnutrition got worse because people did not have enough food to eat, and there were about five deaths every day in his hospital from people suffering from malnutrition whose bodies were swollen. The hospital, by the way, where this was taking place uh, was only about 12 miles from the model cooperative you visited, Lebo. My question, um, is this the type of information as a journalist you would have liked to obtain uh, if you had been allowed to visit a hospital, uh, to see patients who were sick, uh, to speak to health officials during your trip? Absolutely. That's what I would have liked to have found out. President. I, uh, Mr. President, I object to this question. It is, um, various, uh, this question is asking for speculation of the witness. Um, and I think it's not appropriate to ask such a question to the witness. If I may respond, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Dudman is a journalist. We're asking about articles uh, written. He's written directly on this very question that he wanted to go and visit hospitals but was denied. I think this is an entirely important uh, and relevant subject to pursue. President, in this case, uh, the international deputy co-prosecutor can put such a question, and uh, the chamber wishes to know about this point as well. And uh, for the defense counsel, the chamber has also allowed you to allow you to put some question as well to uh, Mr. Dutman. You may now proceed, International Deputy Co Prosecutor. Uh, so the record is is clear, Mr. Dutman. Could you repeat your answer to that question? Question. Pourriez-vous répéter votre réponse, s'il vous plaît, Monsieur Dutman? Will you ask the question again? The question is whether this is the type. Uh, the Question. information that I read to you, whether this is the type of information you would have liked to obtain if you had been allowed to visit a hospital, see patients, and speak to health officials in Democratic Campuchia. Yes, it is, exactly. <coughs> is it fair to say, Mr. Dudman, with respect to issues like food supply, work conditions, health of the people, uh, that in uh, many respects, uh, what you saw during your trip was what the Khmer Rouge officials allowed or wanted you to see. Is that a fair statement? I don't know, think completely fair. What would you say? Um, 
let, let me put it to you another way. Um, did you have any way of knowing or verifying uh, whether cooperatives and work sites uh, to which you were taken uh, were representative of life, of what life was like for most people in democratic Kampuchea? I could not be sure that they were representative. I suspected that they were putting their best foot forward. <coughs> now, in the, the same article uh, that I was uh, just quoting, your article titled, Is Cambodia Starving? E305 slash 12.58. Uh, you also wrote the following, quote, even the most complete figures on rice production, health, and nutrition would say nothing about the human price at which production has been expanded. This price includes the forced emergency evacuation of Phnom Penh and other cities, the strict regimentation of those who survived, and the concentration on agricultural production at the expense of freedom to learn, read, travel, and practice religion, end of quote. Could you uh, explain to the court a little uh, why you wrote that the expansion of agricultural production had been at the expense of some basic human freedoms? I don't recall what led me to write that. You also wrote in this article about how during your trip, uh, officials from the regime showed off several new dams, including what you described as, quote, three large concrete structures that they said had been built on a crash basis by thousands of workers using only their hands, end of quote. Um, Mr. Dudman, do you remember anything about those dams? And if so, can you provide uh, to the court your re recollection and impression uh, of the dams and what it would have been like to have built those dams by hand? I don't have a direct reaction, uh, uh, recollection after all these years. I wrote what I saw and what I could, information I could get, but I don't, I can't go beyond the text of what I wrote. Let me ask you one more um, question on this subject, and I'm referring um, here uh, to a different article uh, titled Cooperative, article Cooperative uh, which is in document E305 slash 12.54 uh, English at S0001449 Khmer ERN 0106-3272. In this article, you described the meals uh, that foreign visitors were provided, and you described them as follows, quote, lunch and dinner almost always included two big flounders or other fish a big platter of either prawns or lobsters, and either chicken or chunks of beef or pork plus a big casserole of light Cambodian steamed rice. Salad was sliced cucumbers and boiled eggs. Chinese snowflake beer was the usual beverage." Uh, end of quote. Uh, do you remember uh, receiving meals like this? And can you tell us where, where it was that you uh, were fed meals uh, like the one described here?
And, and did you hear my question, Mr. Dudman? I heard your question. I don't réponse. know. Uh, J'ai bien entendu uh, votre question. I don't re really remember where I had those meals. I, I, uh, I'd be surprised if I didn't say in the story something about where it was. Dû dire où and I just want to clarify. Um, do you think, did you observe that ordinary Question. Cambodians in democratic Kampuchea were receiving meals si like this? I'm sure they were not. Réponse, je suis sûr que ce n'est pas ce genre de repas qu'il uh, I'm going to turn now to um, my next subject, and si that is the uh, treatment of political opponents or enemies by the Khmer Rouge. Um, in the opening paragraphs of uh, an article you wrote that is dated 26 December 1978, the article titled Conformity, a Must for Survival in Cambodia, this is document E338.19, you wrote, and I quote, the Cambodian version of communism has no place in it for anyone who wants to read, write, or even think independently. End of quote. You also stated that the Cambodian Revolution had made conformity a condition of survival. Do you remember, uh, can you give uh, any explanation to the court, Mr. Dudman, of what you saw or learned during your trip that led you to write this? I can't remember how I came to write that. Uh, in the same article, E338.19, uh, you also wrote, a quote, the Cambodian Revolution, surely the most extreme in modern history, evidently has forced former upper and middle class city dwellers to conform to an austere standard of hard manual labor, no money, no mail system, no telephone service, no books, almost no individual property, no advanced education, little or no religion, none of the freedoms accepted or at least professed by most of the rest of the world. Social upheaval under the victorious Cambodian revolutionaries has gone well beyond the Chinese precedent at the height of the great proletarian cultural revolution. Uh, end of quote. But why did you say that the Khmer Rouge had gone beyond the Chinese cultural revolution? I don't remember how I came to make that comparison. In the same article uh, at English uh, 338.19 at English ERN 00444938, Khmer 0107-0497. Um, you described how you had made inquiries to uh, government representatives about reported systematic killings of soldiers and officials of the former regime. And you wrote the following about how Ng Siri responded on that issue. I quote, Ng Siri, Deputy Prime Minister for Foreign Affairs, 
did not seem to be denying the charges. He said in an interview that some killings could not be avoided, but that considering the complicated situation after the war, the Communist Party of Campuchia solved the problem in a good condition and avoided many more killings. Continue quoting him. Maybe that is not your belief, he said, but we are responsible, and we grasp the concrete situation in our country. We carry out all tasks in order to serve the rights of our people and not just the rights of certain groups. End of quote. Now, uh, you referenced um, that um, you had been allowed to conduct an interview of Ying Sari. Uh, can you tell us um, uh, where that interview took place, uh, who was present? Uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your interview of Ying Sari? I don't remember that interview. President, thank you, Le the merci. Deputy International Co-Prosecutor, and thank you, Mr. Merci Richard Nadman. Uh, we take a 10-minute break, and we will resume at 10 past 9 uh, a.m. Uh, Cambodian time. And uh, Mr. Dadman, I don't really know what time it is uh, at your side, but we will take a 10-minute break uh, this morning, uh, our local time. The court is now in recess.